This is big breaking emergency news. They are getting us ready for it to happen again, guys. They are getting us ready. They are doing the same replay. This is a repeat of what happened in 2020. We are seeing new rules just announced. These rules are going in place starting today. And this is a big change. And we're going to see the spread. We've seen multiple different incidences with the CDC now in the past week. And now they're announcing these new rules, right? And this is going to affect air travel. This is essentially a travel restriction that has been put in place and a travel requirement that has been put in place by our government. All right, so very similar to what happened in 2020, we are seeing a repeat and we could see the same measures taken that were taken in 2020. So just a warning. This is a big warning. You need to be getting ready. You need to be getting pre prepared because just remember what happened. It feels like a different, it feels like a dream, but it was very quickly when they announced it's time to flatten the curve, all these things. And they are now doing testing for it. They're having requirements for it, new rules for it, all the stuff just announced by the CDC and it's spreading these rules, right? It's, it's going to affect everything if this continues. And when they made this announcement, it was overnight where there was no toilet paper. There were no paper towels. The shelves were empty. All this stuff was affected overnight. Everything changed. You couldn't go to the park. You couldn't go to the store without certain requirements. All these things. There were like time slots to go to the store. All, all this stuff. There were all these different requirements that you needed and these different passports that were implemented. And we are seeing the beginning of this happen again with these new rules that were just put in place by the CDC, right? So let's dive into this news here really quick, guys. Hit it up for me down there. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. I'm posting multiple videos a day keeping you guys updated on this urgent news, right? And really quick, before we get into these rules, I want to give you guys an update on this story that I broke going on a week ago now, where there was an outbreak at a migrant shelter in Chicago. And we now have a update. The CDC has now deployed their personnel to this migrant shelter, quote, migrant shelter in Chicago, and they are saying that five children and four adults now have measles from this outbreak. And now after deploying to these shelters, they are also implementing new rules at U.S. airports. This just went into effect. If you are now traveling, this could affect you, right? So it says U.S. airport nasal swabbing expanded to Chicago and Miami airports, right? So they are now forcing certain travelers to do this nasal swabbing where you have to shove this thing up your nose, right? And I've never done one of these things, but people that I've heard that have done it say that it hurts. It's uncomfortable for them. And I personally would not do this I, I would not recommend to do this right i've never done this you can do it if you want right but i haven't done this and people say that it's uncomfortable it hurts and it's also potentially a pathway to introduce things into your system as well right if something's not completely clean there's a there's a whole host of issues of why i don't want swabs up my nose right it says the centers for disease and control and prevention program ask arriving international passengers to have their noses swabbed and answer questions about their travel it says the program operates at six airports and on tuesday the cdc said it was adding two more 
at Chicago's O'Hare and Miami airports. All right, it says these locations should provide more information about respiratory infections coming out of South America, Africa, and Asia, particularly, the CDC said. It says, quote, Miami and Chicago enable us to collect samples coming from areas of the world where global surveillance is not as strong as it used to be, said the CDC's Allison Taylor Walker, right? So South America, Africa, and Asia. And they said, quote, what we really need is a good view of what's happening in the world so we're prepared for the next thing. That's what CDC's Allison Taylor Walker just said about this issue. So they're getting prepared for the next thing. That's what CDC is warning of. And they are now requiring nasal swabs at Chicago here and Miami. All right. And something to point out is that there are thousands of people a day that are crossing the U.S. southern border. In December, there were over 300,000 people, record-breaking all-time history of any country on Earth, probably in the history of the planet, all right? And none of those, there were no tests, there were no nasal swabs, there were nothing. But if you fly into the country, then you have to do this, all right? So doesn't really make sense, doesn't really make sense. And then... We see in Chicago that there was an outbreak and the CDC is now sending personnel there. All right, so something's going on. And she said that they are getting prepared for the next thing. And it goes on to say the genomic testing of travelers nasal swabs has been mainly focused on the 2020. But testing also is being done for two other respiratory viruses the flu and RSV. It says participants are not notified of their results, but are given a home test kit to take home with them. CDC officials say samples have come from more than 475,000 air travelers coming off flights from more than 135 countries. And it says health officials have also been sampling wastewater that comes off international flights at a few airports and they're testing. And it says they are evaluating the possibility of monitoring wastewater for other things as well. Besides these viruses, these few, they're checking the wastewater to see if there's any viruses in people's systems. So make sure you are getting prepared. Make sure you are getting ready. Make sure you are stocked up. Make sure you have 20 pound bags of rice, right? That's enough calories for two weeks for one person. Make sure you are trying to grow your own food and supplement these things as well. Have your preps, have your food storage, but then also be trying to grow your own food so you can supplement and make these things last even longer if there's a lockdown, if there's supply chain issues. And we, we are going to see things even worse when it comes to the supply chain and when it comes to disruptions, if we see something like this, because we are already at a diminished capacity from the past four years, right? Everything is already way more expensive. It's way more scarce. The supply chains for it are a lot less resilient. And we're already seeing disruptions in the supply chain from the stuff going on in the Middle East, right? And the Panama Canal drying up. So if we see this pop off as well, if you remember, they were shutting down factories left and right. They were being shut down from this. They were shutting down production plants for food, right? Tyson facilities shut down left and right. Meat processing plants shut down all over the place. This was part of the reason we were seeing major shortages is because as soon as something happened in one of these places, the entire thing would be shut down right and we're they said they are getting prepared for the next thing the next thing whatever that means whatever that means so you need to be getting prepared for the next thing too all right let me give you guys a quick update here all right chicks are doing good these chicks are going to go outside very soon 
And if it's warm enough, you can put chicks out at around three weeks, right? That's what we've been doing. It's been pretty warm here. And we've been bringing them in at night sometimes when it's cold, right? But around three weeks, they can go outside. And four weeks, five weeks, they're good. They have most of their full feathers. And if you have a flock of them, then they can huddle together and snuggle together, right? So that's what we've been working on because... They were, if you remember, it was, there were points where you couldn't leave your home. They were saying, don't leave your home. Don't go anywhere. All right. And if you didn't have a yard, all the parks were shut down. All the national parks were shut down. A lot of the state parks were shut down. The local parks were shut down. The kids' playgrounds were shut down. All right. I remember some places, there were tape on the swings and stuff. They didn't want you to go on the, for my kids. They didn't want kids to be on the swings or anything or to be on the playground or go on some of these playgrounds. So it was in some places, certain states and national parks shut down. They had these timer things where you had to like go online and make a reservation just to get into a park, just to go to a park. It was chaos, chaos. You had to pay a ticket make a reservation, all the stuff going out at a specific time within like 30 minutes, you had to make it there. And if you miss it, you can't get in. And there's this giant line of people. It's chaos. You couldn't even, the parks were all shut down, but then they were saying, don't leave your home. So if you didn't have a yard or anything, if you didn't have a little homestead, a little garden, there was nowhere to go. There was nowhere to go. You were just trapped inside in your apartment, wherever you were, and breathing this recirculated air instead of being able to go outside and breathe fresh air, work in your garden, work with your animals, check on your chickens, feed your chicks, get them some fresh water, right? Look at this chick here. She's falling asleep. She's nice and cozy here, right? That's what it's about is these systems that we have set up and then once these chicks are laying, we already have chicks laying out here. Once these chicks are laying and they're laying fertilized eggs, then whatever roosters we have, we can eat. Then we have a meat source now, right? And we can feed these chicks from our garden and we already feed our chicks a ton of our waste scraps. Okay, our chicks that are laying eggs right now, a big portion of their diet is just waste scraps from our food because they can eat almost anything all right so that stuff would have just ended up in the trash ended up in a landfill anyways and they can eat almost for free with our scraps and then that's converted into protein into eggs into food for us all right that's what we're working on every single day every day i got we're working on this coop we're almost done with it and we're going to build another coop all right, so the chicks have plenty of room. We don't want them to be cramped or anything. We want them to have plenty of room, plenty of space, and to be happy. So they lay lots of eggs for us, right? So get prepared now. Get ready now. They said the next big thing is coming. Next big thing is coming. So even if you have to get locked down at your house, it's fine. You're good. Your prepper pantry's filled up. Your water tanks are filled up. Your gas tanks are filled up. Your generator's good. It's got an oil change. That's the key to keeping these generators going, right? I have an open frame inverter right behind me here on the ground. And it's a champion, by the way. I have no affiliation, but that's the brand. And it has thousands and thousands of hours, right? We around 5,000 hours because the hour meter stops once you get to a thousand doesn't tell you anymore and we hit that years ago all right so at least five thousand hours on it and it's still going and one of the main keys is to change the oil every hundred two hundred hours on it okay have all these things ready to go you have your prepper pantry stocked up you have your garden going you have your chicks going you got your goats going you got your cows going out there you're good. You don't even need to leave. You're fine. You're ready to be locked in and locked down. And 
we can have these alternative systems where we can barter, we can trade, and we're still going. Our economy is still moving, even if the global supply chains are shut down, right? So make sure you're in a jurisdiction as well that wouldn't be implementing a lot of restrictions because we knew we knew how it was. I was traveling all over the place. A lot of places you could just do whatever you want. There wasn't really anything going on in a lot of rural places. All right, but in other places, it was the cops were pulling you over and checking to make sure you're you're uh, you're not out and about when you're not supposed to be. Right, making sure you're not. I remember this one guy. He had a game shop selling games, and they came and shut down his store because he was selling games. All right, so just depends on where you're at. Make sure you're in a good location. So you are prepared and ready. All right. So thank you guys. Please hit it up for me down there. I appreciate that. Hope you have big blessings for your life, your family. And I hope you have a big old blessed day.